Hello, this is Lino Tadros again, and in this video, I would like to show you how real time analytics works in Microsoft Fabric. So, right now, uh, if you go all the way down on the uh, left side, you'll notice all the different entities uh, available in Fabric, and I'm also going to go to the real time analytics all the way here. At this point, I have the choice between creating a brand new KQL database or a query set. There is a, something in preview called Event House. We will talk about that in a later video as well. But for right now, I'm going to create a KQL database. And that is uh, mainly for eventing, having a lot of data coming in from like IoT devices um, or coming in from log analytics workspaces, something that on a periodic time, sometimes with IoT every five or 10 seconds, sometimes log analytics happen from different applications, for instance, sending their logs there. And there has to be an easy way for me to accumulate all the stuff and being able to query it in an easy way, which is the KQL language itself. So I'm going to create a KQL database for right now. Let's call this one, for instance, uh, stir track KQL. There you go. And we'll give it a DB so we can remember this is the database itself. I'm going to create it as a new database. We'll say create. And that will take a few seconds and the database will be created for us in my workspace. Excellent. So as you can see, after maybe 20 seconds or so, it did create it. I have it here. I'm the creator of this one in my region for East US. I can actually copy that to the clipboard and that will be the query of where I can run queries against that database. If it's about ingestion, it's almost identical to the query UI, but in the beginning it will say ingest dots. Just to show you what it looks like, if I uh, click on that, for instance, put it in the clipboard, let me bring up a notepad or something to show you that. Let's say notepad. All right, it's coming up. right there and if i paste this right in here that will be the weird letters and numbers in the beginning but it's going against custo.fabric.microsoft.com all right let me go ahead and show you the ingestion one i'm going to copy that to the clipboard as well and let's go ahead in here and bring it in you will notice it's the same exact one but it puts ingest dash in here. So one of them is for the ingestion of the data and another URL is for the querying of the data as well. This is just how Microsoft Fabrics does it, okay? There is nothing in it right now. The size is zero, uh, compressed and uncompressed. It's all there. So it's ready for me now to bring some data into that database. There are a lot of different ways in Fabrics that I can do that. I can bring in some sample data. I can upload my own local file just for testing maybe. I can use data that I have already in my one lake. I can actually use an Azure storage, like a blob storage. If I have an event hub or if we use to IoT hub or something like that, I can connect it uh, automatically and being able to get the data from there. Also, I can actually create a pipeline that dumps actually the data from whatever I wanted to bring it in on a schedule every five seconds, every hour, every midnight, whatever it is, I can do that on a pipeline. So the first sample will do a local file. Let me click on that local file in here. And now it will tell me what is the name of the table that you'd like to create in the database for the KQL. So I'm going to create a table in here. Let's say call it, for instance, uh, um, products uh, KQL so that we will have a difference between that and the one already available in my, uh, in my Delta uh, Parquet files, all right? And in here, I'm going to go ahead and click uh, Browse, and I'll find a file on my machine to upload it to. One thing you have to be aware of, if you're going to do it this like this by uploading a file, the maximum is one gigabyte uncompressed. That's the maximum size that you can upload yourself uh, using the user interface in here, okay? So I'm going to say Browse to Files. Let's go ahead and find it if I can find it somewhere. All right, there is an items of CSV. It's uh, about 33 megabyte. It's a pretty small file. And we'll say open. And now it's uh, loading. And I'll come back after finishing uh, uploading these 33 uh, megabytes into my KQL database. Excellent. It finished after maybe 20 seconds or so. And I'm going to say next. And now it's going to ask me, uh, this is the local file where... Uh, where we're going to inject and this is going to tell you what exactly is going to go for the preview of the data itself notice there is a duplication between the header in here but i'm going to tell it no i want the first row to be the column header so we'll turn this on that will fix it so now we have the headers correctly it is at a csv file the format i can also have a chance to click on edit columns and take a look at all the column names the sources and the types if i would like to change any of that this is the time to do it. It gives, gives you a sample of what the data looks like inside of the database so we can feel comfortable with it. I'm going to say back. I'm not going to change anything. I'm going to say finish. So now it will take a few seconds and it will actually ingest the data. It's pending, but it will take only very few seconds because this is a very small table. 
And once it's done, I will end up having my data available in the lake house, uh, in, the, uh, in the KQL database itself. So the ingestion have finished. Let's close this guy. And notice on the left side, there is our KQL database called StirTrek KQLDB. And I've got myself a products KQL in here. The original size, if you remember, it's about 37 megabyte. It compressed it to 11.16 megabyte. It's not a great compression, but it's good enough. It's 3.32 uh, is the compression ratio. But I have it ready for me in here. Now I can actually open it up. I can actually query against it. I can do all whatever I want against this data. And it could be actually live data. That means it doesn't have to be data that you get in here and say it's a one-time thing. I can make it a continuous data using a pipeline or a data flow or an event hub or an IoT hub to be able to tell it, hey, whenever a, an event triggers coming in from one of my IoT devices, for instance, automatically send it to uh, the table that I just created for you. So you can actually make it continuous as well. You don't have to do this manually all the time. Makes sense? Let's go ahead and do also one from the one lake. Let's go, for instance, say get data. And this time, instead of getting a local file, I'm getting it from one lake. So we'll say one lake and we'll create a table. We'll call this one uh, customer KQL. Oops, spell it correctly. And we'll say uh, in here, I would like to get the name of the file. Unfortunately, there is nothing in here that says browse. I cannot uh, really browse into my one lake to find out what the URL is. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to cancel this for a second and go cheat a little bit. We'll say yes, cancel. And you will notice now I need to go back to my uh, workspace right there. And I'd like to open up the, uh, the lake house. Let me open up the lake house again. And if you remember, we had a file in here called customer.csv. See that? This is files. This is not the Delta uh, Parquet one. This is just the CSV file. If I click on this guy and go to properties, you will notice there is a URL in here. This is the location in your one lake that has that file in it. So I'm going to copy this guy into the clipboard. Uh, we can cancel now. And let's go back to our KQL. All right, let's go ahead and do it again. We'll say get data. We'll say one lake. And again, we'll create the name of the file, the uh, customer KQL. And in here, I'm going to be pasting that URL that I got. All right, excellent. Let's go ahead and click on plus. Wait a few seconds. Fortunately, there is no hourglass or anything, so you, you, it, it is working, so be patient. <laughs> All right, It's going to bring you back uh, that location that we just uh, copied, and the CSV file for the customers.csv will be available. All right, let's say next. It's going to bring this in. It has the same issue regarding the header, so I'm going to turn it on so we don't have duplication. We're good. Notice this time it's not a CSV. It's a schema coming in from a definition file. It is a CSV format. I can still edit the columns, do whatever I need to do to fix um, types uh, and so on. Maybe change the name, do whatever I want from there. Excellent. All right, I'm going to say finish. And now it will take a few seconds and this customer.csv will end up being ingested directly into my uh, KQL database, which is the StirTrek KQLDB. Let me close this guy down. And this one has 402,000 rows in this one. All right. Um, let me also also notice that I can see it in here. OK, so I need to refresh. Sometimes it does not show up automatically. You will need to refresh it. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, right click in here and we'll do a refresh. We have to be patient a little bit. <laughs> Mainly if you click on that refresh all the way at the top there, let's go ahead and click on it. Hopefully we'll see. Oh, there it is. Customer KQL is in. Let me click on it and see what the compression rate is. So the original size was 3.35 megabyte, which is not much at all, but the compressed size is less half a meg. So the compression is about 5.82, uh, which is not bad, but it's not great either. Sometimes you'll get this in the hundreds of uh, hundred different compression ratio, which is awesome. Um, so that could possibly be based on the amount of data you're bringing in. All right. Well, let me go ahead and do one more. So I, trade, I did one with a file. I did one with uh, a one leg. I want to do one actually with a sample that comes with the system automatically. I'm going to say get data and we'll say sample. And there are a lot of samples. I definitely recommend for you to play around with these samples. There is a stock one if you're interested in stocks and stuff like that. There is a weather one. There is an interesting one for IoT analytics. It's about 70 megabyte. There is an automotive operation analysis metrics. This one is very interesting, the log analytics that will teach you how to dump all the logs from your application into a log analytics workspace and being able to use the KQL language inside of Fabric to analyze all the stuff. That would be a great thing to do as well. 
Anyway, I'm going to start with the stock analytics here. Let's click on this guy. And this one is not going to ask you anything. It's just going to do the job for you. It's going to bring in the 286 megabyte, make it available as a new table inside of your KQL database. And voila, it took about 30 seconds. And now I have a new table in the KQL database called stocks. Uh, and if I click on it, notice there is 3.8 million rows inside of the stocks. And it literally took about 20 seconds to just that in into my uh, my KQL database. It was 300 megabyte. It ended up being uh, 98. Again, it's not a great, great compression, but um, it's better than the 300, all right? And you have all the schema at the bottom in here, and we are in pretty good shape um, with the ingestion of the data. So how can I actually get into any of these tables, whether it's custom QL, products KQL, or stocks, how can I query against it? Well, let's go back to the third track workspace, for instance, and I like to do it from here. Notice my database for KQL is right there. And I'm going to say new, and you will notice other than the KQL database, there is a KQL query set. Let's create one of those. We'll give it a name. We'll call it, for instance, uh, stocks uh, KQL query. No writing. We'll say create. And that will take a second and then it will tell me which um, which kql do you want to uh, connect to i only have one right now i'm going to click on that and we'll say connect and then it will give you three different examples i mean you can delete all the stuff and start from the beginning but it's a good idea actually to try it out yourself so let me take the first query for instance and we'll say uh, stocks all righty and there it is there is code completion that can help you out as well say show me the first 100 records for instance from the stock so you put the name of the table then you can put a pipe and we'll say take 100 so if you highlight these two lines and say run this is the only one that will run and now immediately you see the, the speed is incredible 0 0.173 seconds in here for 100 records to come back from this data if i come back in here let me steal the word stocks from here we'll put it here to find out the count so let's do this and highlight these two lines and we'll say run this again and you will notice there is 3.8 million i just want you to notice the speed of being able to query using kql into these tables in the database all righty let's do one more with uh, with this one in here control v stocks and this one is so summarize ingestion count of course i ingested only once but you can imagine of course having this on a continuous for iot devices it means it will be the, doing the ingestion a lot so i can see a history really for the ingestion but for this one if i run this guy let me go ahead and highlight these two lines we'll say run will be only one right and there it is uh, this just happened the date and time 3.8 uh, million records came in on this one as well let's do also something a little bit more fun than all of this i'm going to go ahead and create uh, stocks all right we'll put the pipe and uh, what do i want to do here in the stocks let's say for instance i wanted to get it only for the microsoft so there is a field or a column called ticker so we'll say where uh, ticker equal equal and we'll say msft that's the sticker for the uh, for Microsoft, I can also put another pipe in here and we will tell it, for instance, I would like you to project only two uh, columns, not all of them. We'll say project and we'll say the close and the date. How about that? All righty. Oh, the close have a capital C, I believe. Yep, there you go. And then what else do I want to do? Maybe I would like to order that uh, descending. So I'm going to go ahead and put a pipe in here again and we'll say order by. Uh, date that's the name of the field and we'll say dscsc for descending as well let's go ahead and run this and see if we can get uh, something regarding microsoft very fast it's about 10,000 records so this goes way back so this is 2022 if i go all the way down oh my goodness it's starting from 1986 for the stock so you can find out from every single day what was the value for that night about 10,000 of those what if i want to see this in a graph see how easy kql is it's a great language by the way so if i come in here we'll say render and we'll say time chart like this well, there you go and we'll highlight these few lines and we'll say run it then you'll be able to render all this data from 10,000 records directly in here as well so there's so much stuff i mean this video we're not going to teach all the stuff you can do in a kql but it's very very powerful extremely fast for it's made for a significant amount of data all right uh, i wish sometimes sql have some of the features available in kql but uh, this is very very powerful i hope this was useful to show you why would you want to use kql and kql databases and query sets um, please don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you again soon in another video. Thank you.